Let's talk about fume extraction without having to vent out of a window. When you operate a laser, you are burning material, which means fumes are created and you have to exhaust them somehow. Where does the smoke go? Where does the dust from the wood and the acrylic and the leather and all the other things you're engraving and cutting go? Well, you pretty much have two options. The most common option is to vent out of a window. Why? Well, because it's affordable. That's what I've been doing with my Mira 7 for the last couple of years. Easy peasy, I created a panel, cut a hole into it, connected my hose, and vent out that way. The other way to break down the fumes is to get a fume extractor. And this is a device that will break down the fumes indoors. However, it's not as common because it's kind of expensive, but it is also the most environmentally friendly option. I did a lot of digging around before deciding on which fume extractor I was going to get for my new operation. It was a whole new learning curve for me, but I did learn a few things that you'll wanna keep in mind as you start to shop for one for yourself, if you're looking for one. First of all, size matters. Companies that make fume extractors do not care about the tube wattage of your laser. Rather, they're more concerned about the filter capacity as it relates to your work bed. So the bigger the laser, the bigger the filters need to be, and the bigger the fume extractor is going to be. My next tip is to look for a fume extractor that has multiple filters. This way you can ensure optimal fume extraction in your workspace. So that would mean um, a fume extractor that has a pre-filter, a HEPA filter, and a carbon filter. So up here up top, you have the pre-filter. This is what's gonna catch all of the larger particles from your job, okay? The HEPA filter is what's going to catch all of the smaller particulates. And then down here, you have the carbon filter, and this is what's going to break down the fumes and get rid of the smell, okay? And one of the reasons I like that they are separated is because that means I only have to replace, you know, the filter that needs replacing. So for example, if you take a look at um, some other models like the Glowforge air filter, for example, it means that you have to throw them both out even if you still have life in one of them. This gives me the freedom to hopefully stretch my dollar and save money. My next tip is to keep in mind that you are going to have to replace filters over time and how frequently you replace them is going to be contingent on how much you're using your laser. This is one of the main reasons why I ended up going with a filter box. And I wanna thank filter box for sending me their micro filter box for my Mira 5 today. Not only do I like that each filter is separated, there was also the added plus that the design is vertical, which I like because it's space saving. And a lot of my laser friends had positive things to say about their experience with both the company and the fume extractor itself. Setting up my filter box micro was actually very easy. As a matter of fact, it was much easier than the setup for the exhaust system that I use for my seven. I didn't have to size the window, find a panel, cut out a hole um, and set it up. And I, I get that you, you know, you save with having to do that, but it is kind of nice that now it's kind of like a, it was easy setup and it's kind of like a set it and forget it kind of thing. Whereas with my current setup every day or every time I use my laser, I have to put it into the window and take it out of the window. Not a big deal, but it is kind of nice that now, like I said, I can set it and forget it. It showed up in two boxes and had everything I needed ready to go. So there was no need to buy anything extra like another hose or extra clamps. It was all included. The micro is a little heavy and it would be helpful to have an extra set of hands to get it out of the box, but I was impatient and excited. So I just went for it. All right, so I was able to safely get the filter box 
micro out of the box without damaging it, thank goodness. And at this point I was like, okay, it's time for a cafecito break. Let me look at the instructions and make sure that I set this thing up properly. Okay, so far it's pretty self-explanatory, seems pretty simple to put together, but before I set it up, I wanna show you the filters and how they stack up here. So the first thing you do is you loosen this here on each side. Okay, and then it just kind of lifts, it lifts right off just like that. So let me go ahead and pull it apart for you so you can see how it functions. We've got the pre-filter, that's pretty light and it's easy to remove. You've got the HEPA filter, a little heavier. And then the carbon filter is definitely, oy, that one's heavy. <laughs> and then down here, you have the fan to break it all down. Okay, but it's easy to put together. Just place them back on top of each other, one at a time. So now I'm getting ready to set up the hose. Now the filter box hose is a four inch hose, okay? But I have a Mira 5 and the, the outlet for the exhaust on the Mira 5 is three inches. So they're gonna send you a reducer like the one that you see that I have, like the one that I have here, it's already connected. So I am going to um, connect that to the four inch hose and then secure it with a clamp. All right, so I'm almost done here. Um, now I just need to power it on. There is a switch on the right side of the filter box and then, you know, push the power button and let it tell me what to do. Right away, you're gonna see that it's gonna tell you to push okay so that you can begin the calibration process. This is neat. So pretty much what's happening is the filter box is going to take into account all of the restrictions that are caused by the bends that you have in your hose and the positioning of all of your equipment to, you know, calibrate this and get it working properly for your setup. Okay, so I've done everything. So now it's time to run a job and see how well it does.
guys, so here she is in action. I'm running a job. I'm really loving this setup. I'm not gonna lie. This is this is really nice. I <laughs> people underestimate the Mira 5. I'm loving it. You can see it's a little loud, but you know, lasers are loud. What 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 can you do about it? It's it's really not that bad. It's already kind of grown on me. But here you go, here it is in action. I'm gonna be quiet so you guys can just experience it with me. <laughs> So at this point in the video, I've now been running this for about two weeks and it's been really nice. Um, it's really easy to use and my favorite part is the odor control is really impressive. I can't smell anything. So I still have questions though. How frequently am I gonna have to change out these filters? It looks like for the micro, they cost anywhere from $100 to $300 depending on the filter. So I plan to come back in a couple of months and share that experience with you guys and give you an update. Till then, if you are looking for a fume extractor and you want to get a filter box, then just visit filterbox.com. And if you tell them that you learned about it from that mom with a laser, you'll get an extended two year warranty. With that, that's all I've got for you today, guys. And I'll see you guys around here soon over at that mom with a laser. Bye guys.